All right, one hour to go, and uh, what Chris obviously failed to realize was that was the lie of the day. <laughs> I've never seen narcos, and they never offered to kill us. But uh, yeah, that's why I remember one time I did the lie of the day, and Jorge put it out on social. <laughs> like this is this is a big thing, and uh, look at this. This story is really cool. Completely made up. <laughs> yeah, that's the one risk you do with lie of the day is people tune in and out until mm-hmm. you you know you never know. But um, the uh, by the way, the lie of the day is mine today. So, oh, I thought it was mine. Oh, it is yours today. Okay. Do you have, well, I won't ask you if you've told it. It is yours today. I did it yesterday. So, uh, okay. So, Momo, I've lied of the day. It's my game. That's what I was thinking of. It's uh, my The game of games, by the way, is super close. Ramona, five. Jorge, five. Mason, five. I have three. Lindsay has two. And today's game is worth two. Man. So, uh, Jorge or Momo could take the lead or Lindsay could close the gap. Whatever happens there. Okay. So, um Ramona, there are certain announcers in certain cities who are iconic. You know, the best example of this is Vin Scully, who worked almost into his 90s as the announcer for the Dodgers, and he's just absolutely beloved. Uh, There's a guy in St. Louis that fits that description. His name is Mike Shannon. He's 82 years old, and he's in his 49th and final season broadcasting the games. Mike's been there forever. Um, He's like Vince Scully in St. Louis. So he's in the news this week because during a game, the producer forgot to tell him beforehand about something and then handed him a promo to read on the air about NFTs. So think about this. He's 82, but he doesn't know what an NFT is, and then he gets handed this piece of paper. All right. Um, you know what I'm talking about when they hand announcers yeah. promos to read? Okay. So Shannon, like, I'll give you a good example. When Vin Scully was at the end of his career doing Dodger games, he had an excellent producer that would kind of show him where they were going next. Vin was so good at it that you just had to kind of point him in the right direction. But his producer is a guy named Brad Zager who now runs Fox Sports. But Brad had a reputation of being like he had everything buttoned up. So he gave Vin the, you know, the roadmap to, so Vin could tell all those great stories. And it was like a perfect marriage between producer and announcer. Um, so I don't know who's pronouncing in St. Louis, but they forgot to tell Mike about NFTs. Um, so Mike tried to read the promo, but since nobody explained it to him, it came off as kind of oh. funny. Here's what it sounded like. I think this was on Wednesday. No fundable token, limited to digital item. Oh That's what you're going to give me? Huh? That's it, huh? No. Fungible token. Oh, my God. And that be, oh, here, we got a printout now. Let me, let me read that printout. Here's a strikeout number five. NFT stands for non fungible token. A digital token that's a, a type of a, what's the, what, what is that word? Cyp- oh my God. Cypro. Uh, Cypro. He's trying to say cryptocurrency. Cypro uh, currency. Much uh, like, uh, man, they have words in here I've never heard before. <laughs> All right, so. Because Mike is iconic, it came oh. off as really funny. You know, like he That's can good. do. Nobody's ever going to blame Mike. He's a legend in St. Louis. Everybody That's loves awesome. him. But that, you know, it, it shows you the age gap. Mike's 82. He doesn't know what yeah. an NFT is. But I'm using all of this as an excuse to tell what I think for my money might be the funniest play-by-play broadcast story I've ever heard. Okay. So it was back, in, and this is an example of, I've been asking throughout the show, I've been teasing this. That it's happened to me in my career. It's happened to you in your career. Sometimes you will be on the air and and somebody will say something funny right before you go on. Uh Uh-huh. And you can't stop laughing. You can't hold it together. And this happened to Mike Shannon in the 70s. And everybody was always wondering. He did a whole inning where he couldn't stop laughing. And everybody was wondering, like, what in the world could have been so funny that would have made Mike Shannon laugh for, like, six minutes? 
So a few years ago, Bob Costas, who was working in St. Louis at the time, he was not one of the announcers, but was in the booth, finally came out and revealed what it was. So here's the backstory: The Cardinals had a three-man booth. Jack Buck, Bob Starr, and Mike Shannon. All three of those guys were on the air at the same time calling the games. Now, some Angel fans will remember Bob Starr. Bob came out to California, called the Rams, called the Angels, legendary broadcaster. Costas used to hang out in the booth and just watch those guys work. So one day, the Cardinals are playing a day game, and it's National Dairy Day. All right, so so they're honoring dairy farmers. And a visitor came to the booth while they were on the air. Now, I'm going to let Costas tell the story. I found a clip of him telling it. It runs a little over a minute. And this is why Mike Shannon started laughing and couldn't stop. Hit it, Jorge. Well, a guy from the National Dairy Council had brought with him a woman billed as Miss Cheesecake. And Miss Cheesecake was dressed as if she were in a beauty pageant, a one-piece white bathing suit, white high heels, and a streamer going across her bust, which instead of saying Miss Wisconsin or something, said Miss Cheesecake. And she caused quite a stir when she ambled in to the press box. And she brought with her three individual boxes of cheesecake, little two or three slice pieces of cheesecake. And with great ceremony, she sashayed down the steps and placed One in front of Buck, one in front of Shannon, who was truly flabbergasted, and a third in front of Starr. And Buck continued to broadcast the game. Reach swings, bouncing ball to short, Kessinger up with it, over to first, one down in the Cardinal fourth. That'll bring up Hector Cruz, Hector hitting 268. He leans towards Starr and he says, hey, Bob, what do you think of this cheesecake? And Starr thinks he said, what do you think of this cheesecake? And he says, I'll tell you, Jack, I'd like to eat that right now. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) And Shannon. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Shannon is sitting in the middle of it. And and Buck, you know, who clearly said, what do you think of Miss Cheesecake? And Star heard, what do you think of this cheesecake? And Shannon starts laughing and he can't stop. He Ramona, he laughed the whole inning. Oh my god. Like he couldn't do it. This has happened to me twice in my career. One time I was doing sports in Beaumont, Texas. And right like we were in the break and the guy the the news anchor said yep. something funny. And right then the floor director goes, "And we're on." And he goes, <laughs> and he goes, "Here's John Ireland with sports." And I start looking at the camera and I can't keep it together. I am laughing so for I had four minutes. I laughed for four minutes continuously. Oh my god! And if you've ever seen somebody do this, what yep. the effect of it is is you start laughing. Yep. But you can't. Rarely do you figure out. I can't even remember what he said to me or what the joke was. I just couldn't hold it together. Yeah. Has that ever happened to you? Not on air. Uh, well, a little bit. What was the one that like, I was reading? The I was reading something online, Lindsay. What was it? It was a, oh it was, when we it were was ty- typos it was it was it was autocorrect autocorrect typos. yeah and I just started reading this thing like bad autocorrect <laughs> and I was like in studio and I could I just could not concentrate on anything any of you guys were saying <laughs> and none of what none of what you guys were talking about had anything to do with the autocorrects it was like a segment or two ago but I was in studio remember Jorge you saw me I was oh, just man, in studio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like I can't even focus on what we're talking about my worst one was off air though. My mom and I, when we, when we hang out together, we, we frequently have the laugh attack, right? Something will happen, and it's just funny, and it's like an inside joke, and there's just nothing you can do. And part of this was we were going on this trip, and somebody, we were, we were talking or laughing too loud on a, on a public bus, and we were in Israel, okay? So in Israel, I guess it's sort of seen as, like you're sort of quiet or something. Like people don't, it's seen as maybe rude to be talking so much. So somebody turned around and shushed us as we were talking and laughing. And it was not just like a, you know, a polite shush. It was like a full on like, like, 
so now all we would do a when, full when on we were shush. Big, a full on shush like we're strangers we don't know you but she just full on shushed us so then whenever we would start to laugh again one of us would do the shush we would turn and be like you're being bad girls and we would shush each other and it's just like the whole trip everywhere we would do it and it was just laugh attack every time so like nobody knew what we were laughing at we barely even knew what we were laughing at at that point but it gets really it's really bad like we'll be in the opera and we'll we'll shush each other and then we just a full on laugh attack and the opera's going on i mean it's really it's terrible yeah all right so <laughs> if if you go on youtube by the way that costa story the oh. miss cheesecake story is on youtube yeah but if you go on youtube there is a about 10 minutes of bloopers yep from seinfeld and it's all of oh, julia yeah. louis dreyfus being unable to stop laughing like it, it's yep. it, literally if you watch it, it's eight minutes long and you'll be halfway through it. You'll be you'll start laughing because she can't stop. So one like, thing I watched, John, that if you go on YouTube right now, go and Google YouTube grape lady, like grape lady, grape lady. OK, it's a local newscaster doing the doing a report from a, a winery and it's she just you know, you can guess what happens. Right. She gets on the grapes and she falls and, you know, gets hurt. <laughs> And I, it just the I don't know what it is. Every time you watch this, you just you can't stop laughing. It's so bad that we laugh at this. But you'll thank me later. I'll tweet it for you if you want. Right, but, <laughs> terrible. But, but nor yeah, normally. Oh. Uh, the uh, the 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 like. You'll you'll see somebody laughing uncontrollably on the air. <laughs> And you won't know why, but that's why. By the way, okay, so you heard Mike Shannon trying to... Um, Keep it together. Yeah, well, he never did on that. But oh. you heard him with the NFT. Yeah. He kept going after that, like, trying to think of what NFT actually stood for. And this is what oh. that sounded like. We're going to find out. When we have to turn this place upside down, we'll find out what an NFT is. <laughs> No friggin' touchdowns. <laughs> no. <laughs> no friggin' tonsils. <laughs> you have that? I got my tonsils taken out. John, did you get your tonsils taken out oh, when you were a kid? Long time ago. Yeah. And they promised you ice cream and cake and all that stuff. And then they, they knew you couldn't eat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how great is that? <laughs> I mean, that's why I, uh, as great as Joe Davis is, and he's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it's those old time, those old time announcers. Uh, that's why you miss them when they're gone. You know, we were so lucky to have Vin until what he worked till he was 88, right? Yep. Yeah. It, un unbelievable. You know, Chick worked till he was 85. I mean, it, it's, uh, I love I feel old... that way. I feel that way a little bit about, uh, Michael Thompson. Oh, Michael's not even close. I mean, to he's not done. old like that, but he's so funny with his little. I mean, just go on his Twitter page. I mean, he just. Uh, oh, every game he'll say something to me that makes no sense. One time, one time we're doing a game and he'll say the Lakers weren't playing very well, mm -hmm. and he says, "Ireland, the Lakers are not playing with enough of that e word." <laughs> and I go, "E word? What are you talking about?" He said, "Urgency." <laughs> oh, Michael the other day tweets. I wish somebody would tell Matt to solve its own problems and leave us out of them. Yeah, he's the best. <laughs> he's the absolute. Like, come on, Michael. If you if you if you have never heard Michael Thompson do a game, you have got to just just even if you watch every Laker game on TV for one game, turn down Billy Mac and Stu and listen to Michael and I just for Michael, just to hear him yep. tell his antidotes. They are all all over in a while. I'll get a I'll I'll get a uh, text from one of our bosses saying, "Did Michael just say that?" Yep. And uh, I'll write back. I'll go, what do you think? And they'll just go priceless. Like, you know, I Michael just... said, I once played with a teammate that was so dumb. I told him how much for a hotel room in the Bahamas cost for seven nights. And he asked me, well, what about the days? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's Michael in, a, in an absolute nutshell. <sighs> He's just the absolute best. And uh, and so if you've never and by the way, we get to do the games coming up in about a month. And as of right now. We're being told that we think we're going to get a chance to travel, so um, that would be would be awesome. Um, uh, we we haven't heard for sure, but we'll see. Um, all right, coming up next, Ramona. If I told you that someone's actual blood 
blood from the person who created something was in the product, would that make you more likely to buy it or yeah. less likely to buy it? I'll explain coming up. All right, Mason in Ireland, Momo in for Mace. We've got Game of Games coming up in about 10 minutes. Um, Momo's got lie of the day. In the meantime, we're talking about the Little League World Series. There's this kid, Gavin Weir, from South Dakota that has thrown four no-hitters. He's given up six hits total, and he's faced over 140 kids. But we're making a star out of him. Everybody, He's on every sports center. He's, uh, it, it's, we've, we're glorifying a 12-year-old. Is there anything wrong with that? Because it makes me a little nervous. Here's Mike in Downey. Hey, Mike, you're on 710 ESPN. What do you think? I think it's a pretty much a catch-22 for this kid's case because he's, like, so good so early. It's almost like he's peaking, and it's going to get, the, I guess, the worst of him in the long run because his expectations are so high that it's kind of unfair for the kid, you know? It's just that he happens to be so good. Yeah, it uh, hopefully he he and like uh, thanks for the call, Mike. Uh, you know, Ramona, some of these Little League World Series kids make it all the way to the professional ranks, like Todd Co- Frazier, Cody Bellinger, yeah, Cody, Cody Bellinger, Bellinger uh, Chris Drury, the hockey player, was in the Little yep. League World Series. Um, so some of these kids are just ridiculous athletes. Um, but um, let's go to JP and Pico Rivera. Hey, JP, you're on seven ten ESPN. Hi. Hello. So. I mean, I, I think that, that they should make a big deal about the kid. I mean, he's worked so hard to get to where he's at. And obviously, talent has a lot to do with it. And he's not many kids his age. So I think, you know, it's, it's, he should be praised and, and, you know, glorified for what he's done because I think it might put him on a trajectory where he, you know, he's going to succeed, you know, in whatever he does. Whether it's but, but, JP, is it, is, it, is it okay – to to do that to a 12 year old who clearly at age 12 probably isn't mature enough to deal with being on the cover of magazines which is where this is heading well we've done it to athletes like you know gymnasts you know when they when they when they've been yeah. that age sure. or that age and they're, they they kick butt and they get gold medals we do that to them and you know as a country we applaud them and we put them on Wheaties boxes and things like that so i mean i don't think this is any different you know what i mean all right thanks man for the phone call yeah it's a good uh, point i mean look I, I just had, I just know from my own experience about, you know, how mature you are at that age. And even when you're competing at the highest levels, like it's so different to not even have this on social media, let alone the extra media that you're putting on by putting them on TV. Like I was super nervous when we used to play on TV in college. Okay. Right. We'd be on the, and the you were 18, regional, 19 years old. Yeah. 18, 19. And we were on some regional Fox station up in the Bay area. And I was just like, Oh man, the TV's here. I mean, it was really a big deal at that age. And so to do that at 12, I just can't even picture it, but I, maybe, maybe today's 12 year olds are way more savvy and used to that because of social media. Cause everything's kind of on social media anyway. But I, I have a friend whose daughters are about that age and was telling me how one of them made an air in one of their nationals tournaments or something. And like, you know, even her teammates were posted it on social media and how damaging that could be when they do that. And, you know, they criticized her and tagged her. I mean, it's just, Ugh. it just feels really rough for that age. Um, Brandon in LA, you're on 710 ESPN. Hi, Brandon. Hey guys, huge fan. Um, I think it's fantastic. That they spotlight them and this isn't just happening in little league world series. I mean, you think it shows like America's got talent, there's kids that are 12 and younger that are getting record deals. Now they're touring or they're in a Vegas show or something. Um, so I just think it's a great opportunity no matter what age you are. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of if they're mature enough to deal with it. But uh, thanks, Brandon, for the phone call. Here's uh, Noe in Simi Valley. Hey, Noe, you're on 710 ESPN. Yeah, I'd say it's not a good thing and because I think as adults, it's our job to protect kids from right. – uh, from stuff. And the thing is, most kids that are playing this game, they're doing it for the game. They're not doing it for fame. And if this kid doesn't have a support system around him, it can bring him to a huge fall. So it's, it's our job as adults to protect kids from big falls. So I don't know. I think we could really help with uh, limiting the exposure that's given to kids in this situation. Um, yeah, it's true. Thanks, Noe. I mean, Ramona, you could make the, a, a pretty convincing argument either way. They're going to be great stories. I remember one year, this was years and years ago, at the Little League World Series, one of the coolest moments I ever saw was there was a team from America. You know, this year there's no teams from outside the United States because of COVID. 
But okay. normally, you know, there's one international bracket and there's one U.S. Yeah. bracket. And remember the international teams used to tag us in the final, like the teams from the Far East or the teams from the Dominican Republic or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. I mean, they just they were better and they would normally end up winning. One year, one of the American teams was in the final and the game was close. It was at the end of the game. And the last kid on the bench who hadn't played had to go into the game. Like they need some kid got hurt, and this kid who hadn't played in like three games was brought in to pinch hit with the winning run on third. And he looked like he wasn't going to do well, like swung and missed at the first pitch. Uh -huh. Look, you know, and they cut to a shot in the stands, and his mom was just insanely nervous. And his little brother, who is lit like a like a toddler, was completely asleep, like was sleeping through the whole thing. And the kid swung and got a hit and won the game and the World Series title for his team. Mm. And the place went bananas. I mean, yeah. like, it, it was like the greatest moment a 12 year old could possibly have. And I thought, well, that right there, just the possibility of that happening makes all this worth it. But then, you know, you think about, like you said, what if they, somebody, they get an easy fly ball to end the game and drop it, or they make a mistake? on an easy play and it goes through their legs. Does that stay with them forever? I don't know if one trade off is worth the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, you look, I, I understand that you can't protect your kids from everything. And at some level you have to just let them figure that stuff out. But I, I at least for me, when I was that age and I'm thinking about for my son, when he's that age, like I just, you know, kick that can down the road a couple of years. Right. And, you know, somebody said that we've we've done it with gymnasts. I yeah, I remember gymnasts as young as 15. I don't remember 12. Do you remember any athletes other than the little leaguers? I feel like some 13 12? year olds and gymnasts. I think gymnasts, maybe 13, would be the youngest I remember. Yeah, I remember like Boris Becker was 16 when he went to Wimbledon. Yeah, tennis, I, there's some teenagers that have been, you know. I mean, 12 isn't even a teenager. 12 yeah. is like, uh, so that's what makes it. That's what makes it a hard thing to kind of, uh, you know, try and figure out. Okay, coming up next is Game of Games. Now, Game of Ooh. Games has turned into an absolute war. Uh, Ramona, who has not had a lot of success traditionally in Game of Games, is tied for the lead in the month of August. Ramona, Jorge, and Mason have five each. I have three. Lindsay has two. Today's game is worth two points. So if Ramona wins it, she takes the outright lead. If Jorge wins it, he takes the outright lead. And if Lindsay wins it, she gets within one. I'm right one. back in it. You and get there's within two one. more days in August next week. Right. <laughs> so remember, this weekend, So the, and I'm on, I'm on vacation next week, so I'm out of it, and I can't win today because it's my game. So this would position one of you, particularly Jorge, to be and Jorge's had on a three month winning streak with yeah, this thing. That's right. Uh, would position you to be in and Mason has never won ever, ever, oh, ever. Man. Are you and, serious? And he has five. He's the worst game of games. He, he plays game of games like he plays fantasy football. Wow. Last place <laughs> Mace, but he's in it even. So a critical. I need some Eminem. I need some Eight Mile coming yeah. back. So critical. This is my chance, you guys. My you, opportunity. It is. Yeah, you will go nuts. Uh, oh, my God. Critical game of games next. And if Ramona's win, got lie of the day. If yeah, you if win I what? Win, I'm going to. There it is. Here we go. I'm going to take a video of me dancing to this. And I'll send it to you. <laughs> uh, oh, I may tilt the game towards you. <laughs> uh, all right. Game of games coming up next. 710 ESPN. All right, time for Game of Games. It's going to be Ramona against Lindsay against Jorge. Uh, Ramona and Jorge are tied for the lead with Mason at five each. Lindsay's got two, but this is worth two. So if Lindsay wins it, she'll be knocking on the door of first place. Now, uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's a twist in this game. Um, the name of this game is Who He Play For. It's another edition. This is an NFL edition. Now, I'm going to read you the name of a player. If you think you know what team this guy plays for, you can buzz oh. in right away. If nobody okay. buzzes in, I'll give you guys three choices and everybody gets a chance. Now, oh. once once I start the choices, it's too late to steal. All right? I'll pause okay, at the end of when I read the name 
to These give you guys players a chance. Or former These players? are all current NFL players oh, who have recently changed teams. Okay. All right, I everybody get it? Oh, yeah, no, right, no, okay. we'll do a okay. practice okay. one. So we'll two more next. we'll okay. do a it's practice okay. one, okay? Former Lions quarterback Jorge. Matt Stafford, Jorge. Momo. The Lions. The Lions. Okay, so you got it. All right, yeah. here we go. That one doesn't count. This right. this one does. Here we go. Vamos. Former Bears quarterback Mitch Trubisky now plays for? Lindsey. Lindsey. Philadelphia Eagles. Incorrect. You're out. All right, for this oh. one question. <laughs> A, Atlanta. B, Buffalo. Or C, Carolina. Jorge, Atlanta, Buffalo, or Carolina? I'll go with B. You're going Buffalo. Ramona, Atlanta, Buffalo, or Carolina? I think it's also, I do think it's Buffalo. You are both correct. He is the backup quarterback to Josh Allen in Buffalo. <laughs> Ramona yeah. won. Lindsey, uh, zero. Ram- uh, Jorge won. All right, here we go. Okay. Former Rams running back Malcolm Brown now plays for A, Miami, B, Dallas, C, Philadelphia. Lindsey, Miami, Dallas, or Philadelphia? Uh, Miami. Okay, Jorge, Miami, Dallas, or Philadelphia? I'll say Philadelphia. Ramona, Miami, Dallas, or Philadelphia? I'm going to say Dallas. Lindsay is the correct yes. one, and we're all tied at one. He's now a member of the Miami Dolphins. <sighs> okay. <laughs> the next one. Former USC star Nelson Aguilar now plays for A, Las Vegas, B, Cleveland, C, New England. Jorge, Las Vegas, Cleveland, or New England? Uh, I'll say New England. All right, Ramona, Las Vegas, Cleveland, or New England? Las Vegas. Las Vegas, Lindsay, Las Vegas, Cleveland, or New England? Patriots. The correct answer is the Patriots. Yes. Lindsay, Dang. two. Jorge, two. <laughs> Ramona, one. Oh. All right, here's the next one. Former Rams wide receiver Sammy Watkins now plays for A, the L.A. Chargers, B, Baltimore, C, Denver. Ramona, Chargers, Baltimore, or Denver? Baltimore. Lindsay, Chargers, Baltimore, or Denver? Baltimore. Jorge. With the crowd, Baltimore. All three of you are correct. Yes. So it's Lindsay, three. Jorge, three. Ramona, two. All right. I got Next one. Now. <laughs> Former overall number one pick, Jadavian Clowney, now plays for A, Ouch. Cleveland, B, Pittsburgh, C, Cincinnati. Lindsay, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, or Cincinnati? Cleveland. Jorge, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, or Cincinnati? The Browns. Ramona, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Cleveland. or Cincinnati? All three of you correct. Lindsay, four. Jorge, four. Ramona, well, Three. All right. Here's the next one. Former Chargers quarterback Tyrod Taylor now plays for A, Detroit, B, Arizona, C, Houston. Jorge, Detroit, Arizona, or Houston? I'll go Detroit. Ramona, Detroit, Arizona, or Houston? Houston. Lindsay, Detroit, Arizona, or Houston? It's Houston. It is Houston. Oh, Lindsay's I'm got five. Oh. Jorge has four. Ramona has four. I'm in there it. I'm are in it. two left, and then we have a tiebreaker if necessary. <laughs> since really Lindsay has I really don't the, know any of these, by the way. These since, are really like total okay. swag guesses. So okay. Lindsay has <laughs> leads. So she, Lindsay, has to go first. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Former Super Bowl MVP Joe Flacco now plays for A, Philadelphia, B, Giants, C, Jets. Lindsay, Eagles, Giants, Um, Jets. I think it's the Jets. Okay, Jorge, Eagles, Giants, Jets. Uh, Be quiet. Eagles, Giants, Jets, Jorge. Eagles. Uh, Ramona, Eagles, Giants, Jets. I think it's the uh, Giants. It's the Eagles. Jorge is tied for the lead. (laughs) Lindsay no five, totally Jorge guessing. five, Ramona four, <laughs> which means everyone's still Dang. in it. Momo, keep in mind that you have to go opposite of what the other people do to okay. stay alive. All I don't right. I really think they know either, so we're all. Just okay, here we go. Lin- okay. Lindsay <laughs> five, Jorge five, Ramona four, 
This is the last one. Eight-time Pro Bowl cornerback Patrick Peterson now plays for A, Seattle, B, Minnesota, C, New Orleans. Lindsay? Uh, I think Minnesota. Okay, Jorge. New Orleans. Ramona. Well, I have to say Seattle. The answer is Minnesota. And Lindsay yeah! wins it. Minnesota, oh, <laughs> oh, Lindsay, you're right back in it. So oh. now listen to the standings. Oh, Ramona, five. Jorge, five. Oh. Mason, five. Lindsay, four. Whoa. It is, two and you only have left. two days left, and they're each worth two on Monday and Tuesday. Oh, this pressure. It, it is anybody. I sent you a video of me dancing. Game. You would have seen more of that. Well, you could, no, wait. <laughs> you, you could still win it. You could still win if you show up on. Uh, if on I win for the month, I will post a video of me dancing. Oh, I love all it. right, all right. Uh, just for kicks, we'll do the tiebreaker. Ryan Fitzpatrick, who plays for Washington, is now on his ninth NFL team. Oof. In his most successful season, how many touchdown passes did Fitzpatrick throw? Lindsay, how many in one year did Fitzmagic throw? The most he uh, ever had in one year. 85. You a think season? he threw 85 I touchdown don't know. passes I don't know. in <laughs> one season? <laughs> that would break days. the all-time NFL record <laughs> by like 30. Uh, Jorge. I'll say 23. 23. <laughs> Ramona. I will say 24. Ramona would have got it. Oh. The answer is 31. Lindsay, I think the all-time record is 55. So you <laughs> saying 85 was a very big compliment to Ryan. That's what, that's what happens when you're put on the spot. You know, you just it doesn't matter. You already number. Yeah, you, you already, already won. won it. Take the win. Okay, the so now. my swag. Yes, so now. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the lie of the day. Oh. Today, the lie was said by Ramona Shelburne, who told me the other day that she was no good at this and she couldn't do it. Yeah. And then came up with a great lie and fooled everybody. So, uh, Jorge, do you have a guess as to what Ramona may have lied about today on the show? I, I actually don't today. You don't have a guess? I right, don't. Lindsay, do you have a guess? Was it when you said that you would rather listen to Drake than Kanye? Oh, very oh, good. Yeah, no, that's, okay. that's not, that wasn't out my lie. All right. So that means I'm the only one who stands between you and an undefeated record. Ooh. I think you made up the story about a 12-year-old that you played softball with that then she went off a cliff and sucked after that. Yeah, I don't no. think that person exists. Yeah, no, she totally does. I told you her name even, and that was totally her right. name. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't yeah. think you could be that mean. That's why I yeah. thought it was the lie. No, no, we, I think we were off air for that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all so right, my so actual what was... lie of the day. I thought you guys were all going to go for something I said around the Stanford band and the tree yeah. and all that. That was not the lie. I never got kicked out of a game for arguing with the umpires. Really? Yeah. No, I mean, I, I totally would have thought that was times. you. Yeah, I sold that one. No. I mean, I definitely. You did. Yeah. I, I've never got kicked out of the game for game. No, right. come on. I know where my lines are. All right. <laughs> you don't use, do you think Momo was out there dropping four-letter words? To no, all but else? I think you were out there arguing. And I think if you saw Mendoza arguing, you would have stepped in and argued on her behalf so she didn't get thrown out. Yeah, no. No. Nope. Never got, <laughs> totally. you never got thrown out of the game. I was like, uh, people are definitely going to get this one. I okay, so little known, little known fact. <laughs> in his entire 11-year career, okay, Mm -hmm. um, how many technical fouls do you think Michael Thompson got? Momo? One. Lindsay? Zero. Jorge? Yeah, zero. Zero is the right answer. Wow. He's Michael, too nice. Yeah, Michael never, ever got yeah. a technical foul the entire the time. Yeah, the played. only time I ever came close to getting kicked out of a game was in soccer when it was my senior year of high school. And the umpire, uh, umpire, the ref called like a really bad call and we were losing and I was just all emotional and stuff. And I, I got really upset, but I just got a yellow card. That was it. That's it. Wait a minute. Oh, because you're, I, I thought. Yeah, wait, I was that, arguing. I was like, that wasn't yeah. offside. Ah, okay. You suck. You know, it was like that. But that's the only, it was like a yellow card. It wasn't even. Yeah. All right. I never uh, did that baseball kick dirt on the umpire. What are you talking? What do you think I am? Okay, by the way, uh, remember tomorrow college football season opens. UCLA versus Hawaii at the Rose Bowl. Uh, UCLA is a 17.5 point favorite. Ramona, what's the right side of that bet? Uh, yeah, I'll go 
with UCLA. That's a big number, but it's at home. It's a first game. I think a lot right. of pressure on Chip Kelly. I think good. you're right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, Ramon and Mace will be back here on Monday. Uh, coming up. Come, yeah, maybe. <laughs> coming up next, live from Hollywood Park Casino, Woo! Scott Kaplan and Travis Rogers to be joined eventually at some point of that show by Keyshawn Johnson, wow. who's back in town. Stay tuned for that on 710 ESPN. All right, time for Game of Games. It's going to be Ramona against Lindsay against Jorge. Uh, Ramona and Jorge are tied for the lead with Mason at five each. Lindsay's got two, but this is worth two. So if Lindsay wins it, she'll be knocking on the door of first place. Now, uh, there's, a, <laughs> there's a twist in this game. Um, the name of this game is who he play for. It's another edition. This is an NFL edition. Now, I'm going to read you the name of a player. If you think you know what team this guy plays for, you can buzz in right away. If nobody buzzes in, I'll give you guys three choices and everybody gets a chance. Now, once once I start the choices, it's too late to steal. All right? I'll pause at the end of when I read the name to give you guys a chance. These are all current NFL players who have recently changed teams. All right? Everybody get it? Oh, yeah, I know. No, we'll okay. do a practice okay. one. So we'll two more next. we'll okay. do a practice one. Okay. Former Lions quarterback Jorge. Matt Stafford, Jorge. Momo. The Lions. The Lions. Okay, so you got it. All right, yeah. here we go. That one doesn't count. This right. this one does. Here we go. Vamos. Former Bears quarterback Mitch Trubisky now plays for Lindsay. Lindsay. Philadelphia Eagles. Incorrect. You're out. All right, for this oh. one question. <laughs> a. Atlanta, B, Buffalo, or C, Carolina. Jorge, Atlanta, Buffalo, or Carolina? I'll go with B. You're going Buffalo. Ramona, Atlanta, Buffalo, or Carolina? I think it's also, I do think it's Buffalo. You are both correct. He is the backup quarterback to Josh Allen in Buffalo. (laughs) Ramona (laughs) won, Lindsey zero, uh, Jorge won. All right, here we go. Former Rams running back Malcolm Brown. Now plays for A, Miami, B, Dallas, C, Philadelphia. Lindsay, Miami, Dallas, or Philadelphia? Uh, Miami. Okay, Jorge, Miami, Dallas, or Philadelphia? I'll say Philadelphia. Ramona, Miami, Dallas, or Philadelphia? I'm going to say Dallas. Lindsay is the correct yes. one, and we're all tied at one. He's now a member of the Miami Dolphins. <sighs> okay. <laughs> The next one. Former USC star Nelson Aguilar now plays for A, Las Vegas, B, Cleveland, C, New England. Jorge, Las Vegas, Cleveland, or New England? Uh, I'll say New England. All right, Ramona, Las Vegas, Cleveland, or New England? Las Vegas. Las Vegas, Lindsay, Las Vegas, Cleveland, or New England? Patriots. The correct answer is the Patriots, yes. Lindsay Dang. two, Jorge two, Dang. Ramona one. Oh. All right, here's the next one. Former Rams wide receiver Sammy Watkins now plays for A, the L.A. Chargers, B, Baltimore, C, Denver. Ramona, Chargers, Baltimore, or Denver? Baltimore. Lindsay, Chargers, Baltimore, or Denver? Baltimore. Jorge. With the Char- crowd, Baltimore. All three of you are correct. Yes. And so it's Lindsay, three, Jorge, three, Ramona, two. All right. I got Next one. Now. <laughs> Former overall number one pick, Jadavian Clowney, now plays for A, Ouch. Cleveland, B, Pittsburgh, C, Cincinnati. Lindsay, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, or Cincinnati? Cleveland. Jorge, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, or Cincinnati? The Browns. Ramona, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Cleveland. or Cincinnati? All three of you correct. Lindsay, four. Jorge, four. Ramona, oh. three. All right, here's the next one. Former Chargers quarterback Tyrod Taylor now plays for A, Detroit, Ooh. B, Arizona, C, Houston. Jorge, Detroit, Arizona, or Houston? Oh, I'll go Detroit. Ramona, Detroit, Arizona, or Houston? Houston. Lindsay, Detroit, Arizona, or Houston? It's Houston. It is Houston. 
Oh, Lindsay's I'm got five. Oh. Jorge has four. Ramona has four. I'm in there it. I'm are in it. two left, <laughs> and then we have a tiebreaker if necessary. <laughs> Since really Lindsay has. I really don't the, know any of these, by the way. These Since, are like total okay. swag guesses. So okay. Lindsay has <laughs> leads. So she, Lindsay, has to go first. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Former Super Bowl MVP Joe Flacco now plays for A, Philadelphia, B, Giants, C, Jets. Lindsay, Eagles, Giants, um, Jets. I think it's the Jets. Okay, Jorge, Eagles, Giants, no, no, Jets. Uh, you, you, be quiet. Eagles, Giants, Jets, Jorge. Eagles. Uh, Ramona, Eagles, Giants, Jets. I think it's the uh, Giants. It's the Eagles. Yes. Jorge is tied for the lead. <laughs> Lindsay no five, totally Jorge guessing. five, Ramona four, <laughs> which means everyone's still Dang. in it. Momo, keep in mind that you have to go opposite of what the other people do to okay. stay alive. All I don't right. I really think they know either, so we're all just okay. Here we go. Lind okay. Lindsay <laughs> five, Jorge five, Ramona four. This is the last one. Eight-time Pro Bowl cornerback Patrick Peterson now plays for A Seattle. B, Minnesota. C, New Orleans. Lindsay. Uh, I think Minnesota. Okay. Jorge. New Orleans. Ramona. Well, I have to say Seattle. The answer is Minnesota. And Lindsay yeah! wins it. Oh, Minnesota, oh, Lindsay, you're right back in it. So oh. now listen to the standings. Oh, Ramona, five. Jorge, five. Oh. Mason, five. Lindsay four. Whoa! It is, two and you only have left. two days left, and they're each worth two on Monday and Tuesday. Oh, this pressure! It, it is anybody. I sent you a video of me dancing. Game. You would have seen more of that. Well, you could no wait. <laughs> so, you you could still win it. You could still win if you show up on. Uh, if on I win for the month, I will post a video of me dancing. Oh, I love all right, it. all right. Uh, just for kicks, we'll do the tiebreaker. Ryan Fitzpatrick, who plays for Washington, is now on his ninth NFL team. Ooh. In his most successful season, how many touchdown passes did Fitzpatrick throw? Lindsay, how many in one year did Fitzmagic throw? The most he uh, ever had in one year. 85. You a think season? he threw 85 I don't touchdown know. passes I don't know in one season? season. <laughs> that would break days. the all-time NFL record <laughs> by, like, 30. Uh, Jorge. I'll say 23. 23. <laughs> Ramona. I will say 24. Ramona would have got it. Oh. The answer is 31. Lindsay, I think the all-time record is 55. So you <laughs> saying 85 was a very big compliment to Ryan. That's what, that's what happens when you're put on the spot. You know, you just it doesn't matter. You already number. Yeah, you, you already, already won. won it. Take the win. Okay, Take the so now. That's my swag. Yes, so now. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the lie of the day. Oh. Today, the lie was said by Ramona Shelburne, who told me the other day that she was no good at this and she couldn't do it. Yeah. And then came up with a great lie and fooled everybody. So, uh, Jorge, do you have a guess as to what Ramona may have lied about today on the show? I, I actually don't today. You don't have a guess? I right, don't. Lindsay, do you have a guess? Was it when you said that you would rather listen to Drake than Kanye? Oh, very oh, good. Yeah, no, that's, okay. that's not, that wasn't out my lie. All right. So that means I'm the only one who stands between you and an undefeated record. Ooh. I think you made up the story about a 12-year-old that you played softball with that then she went off a cliff and sucked after that. Yeah, I don't no. think that person exists. Yeah, no, she totally does. I told you her name even, and that was totally her right. name. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't yeah. think you could be that mean. That's why I yeah. thought it was the lie. No, no, we, I think we were off air for that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all so right, my so actual what was... lie of the day. I thought you guys were all going to go for something I said around the Stanford band and the tree yeah. and all that. That was not the lie. I never got kicked out of a game for arguing with the umpires. Really? Yeah, no. I mean, I, I totally would have thought that was times. you. Yeah, I sold that one, no. I mean, I You did? Have... Yeah. I, I've never got kicked out of the game for no. Right. Come on, I know where my lines are. All right. <laughs> you don't use. Do you think Momo was out there dropping four-letter words? To no, but no. I think you were out there arguing, and I think if you saw Mendoza arguing, you would have stepped in and argued on her behalf, so she didn't get thrown out. Yeah, no. No. Nope. <laughs> never got. <laughs> totally. you never got thrown out. Of the game. I was like, uh, people are definitely going to get this one. I okay. Don't know. So little known, little known fact. 
in his entire 11 year career. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, how many technical fouls do you think Michael Thompson got? Momo? One. Lindsay? Zero. Jorge? Yeah, zero. Zero is the right answer. Wow. He's Michael, too nice. Yeah, Michael never, ever got yeah. a technical foul the entire the o- time. Yeah, the played. only time I ever came close to getting kicked out of a game was in soccer when it was my senior year of high school. And the umpire, uh, umpire, the ref called like a really bad call and we were losing and I was just all emotional and stuff. And I, I got really upset, but I just got a yellow card. That was it. That's it. Wait a minute. Oh, because you're, I, I thought. Yeah, wait, I was that, arguing. I was like, that wasn't yeah. offside. Ah, okay. You suck. You know, it was like that. But that's the only, it was like a yellow card. It wasn't even. Yeah. All right. I never uh, did that baseball kick dirt on the umpire. What are you talking? What do you think I am? Okay, by the way, uh, remember tomorrow <laughs> college football season opens. UCLA versus Hawaii at the Rose Bowl. Uh, UCLA is a 17-and-a-half-point favorite. Ramona, what's the right side of that bet? Uh, yeah, I'll go with UCLA. That's a big number, but it's at home. It's a first game. I think a lot Why of pressure on Chip Kelly. I think good. you're right. Yeah. All yeah. right, so uh, Ramona and Mace will be back here on Monday. Uh, maybe. Coming up, come, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Coming up next, live from Hollywood Park Casino, Scott Kaplan and Travis Rogers to be joined eventually at some point of that show by Keyshawn Johnson, who's back in town. Stay tuned for that on 710 ESPN.